Good evening. Thank you for coming to this IACAC virtual college exploration session. My name is Dina and I'm your facilitator. In just a moment, I'm gonna turn this over to your presenters for this evening. Just have a couple things I wanna share with you. One is that when you um, ask questions this evening, please understand that your microphone and your camera are turned off in Zoom webinar. So your panelists cannot see or hear you. Do please type your questions into the Q&A chat box and your presenters will definitely respond, um, you know, whether it's throughout or at the end or afterwards, what have you, they will respond. Um, also want to make sure that you realize that there are more sessions available should you want to sign up for additional ones. You can find those on the IACAC website at IACAC.org. That's also where you will find a recording of this webinar, which will be posted within a few days. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to your presenters for the evening. And thank you again for coming. Well, good evening and welcome. We're very excited for you to join us this evening. Our session is on the topic of the University of Memphis. And we're going to tell you much more. We do want to start with introduction. So I'll begin. My name is Jamie Staggs and I am a regionally based admissions counselor. I live in the St. Louis region and I take care of students who are from Illinois, Indiana and Missouri. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Kayla Hubbard. I'm also an admissions counselor and I recruit in Shelby County um, and so right in the Memphis area. Good evening everyone. My name is Michael Clinton. I am the coordinator for recruitment and student engagement for the Helen Hardin Honors College at the University of Memphis. Hello everyone. I'm Kenneth Hogan. I am the coordinator for student engineering student services and I recruit in the St. Louis, uh, Missouri, and of course, the Illinois area as well. All right, so we wanted to start off talking to you a little bit about Memphis. So first we'll start off talking about the city of Memphis and all the great opportunities that we have. Um, of course, you can see in our pictures, we have great entertainment, great food, great barbecue. Um, but even more than that, academically and even socially, we have great internships. So we've been consistently ranked for some of the best internships in the nation. Um, and so you can have hands-on experience at International Paper, AutoZone, FedEx, um, the FedEx, which are all um, Fortune 500 companies, or you can also get experience at St. Jude, Le Bonheur, all of these top research hospitals. So the Memphis has a lot to offer as a city. Um, one thing I always like to tell students is when you're looking at a college, look at the location. So whether you wanna to go to a city or a small town, and then what are the pros and cons of that? Um, and so a really big pro for the city of Memphis is of course the food and the fun, but the great hands-on opportunities that you'll be able to get. And then even more so within our campus community, um, we have over 350 student organizations. And so these are organizations that you can join. They are student led. Um, it is anything from community service organizations to religious life to Greek life. Um, and we also have our Tiger Athletics. And so we play football at the Liberty Bowl and then basketball at the FedEx Forum. It is a great experience. Game day is always extremely fun. Um, and the best thing about that is that students are able to go to all of these games completely free. And so all you have to do is swipe your student ID and then you can get into the game. Um, even more, we have a Blue Line shuttle. And so we'll take you to and from away games. And so maybe you don't wanna drive downtown and you want all your friends to ride the shuttle. Y'all can all ride together, have fun at the game. It's for downtown and then come back to campus together. Um, so there's a lot of ways that you can find your fit within the University of Memphis campus. Next, I want to talk to you a little bit more about housing and dining because essentially we'd love for you to live on campus. Most students are surprised when I tell them that we don't actually require our students to live on campus, even as a freshman. But I really hope you do consider it because there's a lot of great advantages to living on campus. We have eight 
on campus residence halls that you can choose from. They are all fabulous. And I included a couple of photos on this slide. Plus living on campus, it's so convenient to your classes. You're gonna meet a lot of people and there's a lot of great resources that we have available to our students. And it's right there at your fingertips on campus. So please check it out. And then when it comes to dining, we have a Starbucks on campus, Chick-fil-A, Einstein Bagels, Panda Express, and even on certain days, food trucks come to campus and they serve local Memphis cuisine to our students. So really it's a great menu and great dining options for you. And then oftentimes students ask me if they can bring a car to campus. And the answer is yes. Even as a freshman, some of the parking spots are free and others have a small fee. But if you want to bring a car to campus, you certainly may. Next, I wanna to talk to you about the educational opportunities that we have. So at the University of Memphis, we have over 50 majors. There's 250 different major concentrations, 54 master's degrees and 26 doctoral degrees. So there's so much that we can offer you academically. And after this presentation, I really hope that you go to our website and look at all those different major concentrations we have. Click on those that you're interested in and you're gonna learn about the classes that go with that major, the internships, the student clubs, and ultimately the jobs, the career and the profession that that major would lead you to. So check it out. But at the same time, I want to tell you, don't get overwhelmed. Okay, don't get overwhelmed with the process because I realize sometimes it's very difficult to choose a major or know what you want for your career path. We often find that students discover their career path while they're in college. They take a class and they love it and they find out what they're good at and what they enjoy and what career that'll lead to. So please don't get overwhelmed, but do check out our list. I do want to brag a moment about a couple of our majors while I have your attention. Our nursing program it is nationally ranked. It has beautiful state-of-the-art facilities. We have over 300 different clinical affiliations throughout Memphis, Tennessee and Jackson, Tennessee. So excellent program if you're thinking about nursing. Next, my FedEx Institute of Technology. It is perfect for students who want to learn more about drones or cybersecurity or biologistics or autonomous vehicles. If you're passionate about those things, definitely check us out. If you like music, theater, business, education, we have you covered, okay? There's lots of different degrees offered in each of those areas. And then for our engineering program, there's six different programs, excellent research opportunities, and I'm gonna turn it over to Kenneth now so that he can tell you more about our engineering options and brag about them too. Guys, I wanna share with you the opportunities that Perth College of Engineering offers to our students. Engineering at Memphis is so unique. Uh, University of Memphis has roughly over 22,000 students. The Hearst College of Engineering, however, only have about 1,200 students. And with those 1,200 students, what that means for you is that small classroom, hand, small classroom size, hands, hands on activities and personal time with your uh, professor. Herf College of Engineering have six different majors, and those majors are biomedical engineering. That is one of our most popular majors because a lot of our students find out that you can actually go into medical school from that major and you have a better chance of getting into medical school with a biomedical engineering degree. We have a 97% of our students that apply to medical schools with that from biomedical engineer get accepted into a medical school. And also being that Memphis is known as one of three major biomedical hubs in the nation. So a lot of our students have great engineer opportunities, uh, engineer opportunities and internships in biomedical research. And what I like about engineering at Memphis is that our, even as an undergraduate student, you have research opportunities offered to you in laboratory. So as an undergraduate student, you can have those chances working in the lab with a lot of our esteemed uh, professors. And also in engineering, we have civil engineering. Civil engineering is the backbone of this country. Whether we're talking about our water resources, our infrastructure, our roadways, our transportation, that is all engineering. 
a civil engineer. And the University of Memphis, with our civil engineering program, uh, with our water reservations, one of our popular one, understanding that Memphis has a awkward floor uh, that we pulled our water from, some of the purest water in the nation. And our civil engineer actually go in and test that water. And we have a lot of uh, companies that we work with, with internships for our students, with the civil engineering with the concentration in water reservation. And we also have computer engineer and electrical engineer. I always say what students ask me, well, what is computer engineering? Why is it different from computer science? I tell them if you, you want to know what computer engineering is, computer engineer is you just basically taking computer science and you're taking uh, electrical engineer and they had a love child and they produce computer engineer. Uh, <laughs> With computer engineering, you're going to be able to learn those things as programming and coding uh, as you would from computer science, but you're also going to get the, the aspect of the motor boards and things of that nature. It's, so it's like a merger between two major to one computer engineer. Electrical engineer. Electrical engineer is exactly what it says, electrical engineer. But the cool thing that we're doing uh, in our lab, in our electrical engineering lab, is that we're doing EGG, electrical electromagnetic wave brain is measured the brain wave. So the cool thing about that, we have developed an app, our students, and we also have the wet sensory that we place on your head. And through the wet sensory and the technology we develop through the app, we can actually reach your brain waves and it allows us to know if you're paying attention or not. So that's a cool thing we're doing in <laughs> electrical engineering. And for students that say that, I want to be an engineer. I don't know what I want, want to major, what particular area I want to go in. I always suggest that, well, it sounds like you want to do mechanical engineer. Well, why? Because mechanical engineer allows our students to move vastly across all of the engineers. Because engineering is, mechanical engineering is very broad. It can go from inf infrastructure, it can go to from um, biomed, it can dabble even into elect electrical engineer. Mechanical engineer is the, the general engineer. So I always say, how do you explain mechanical engineer? Mechanical engineer is anything that moves, is mechanical engineer. So it allows students to have a broad spectrum of engineer and not just one concentrated area. So in the, our engineering department, where a uh, mechanical engineer department, where we really put a lot of emphasis on is uh, our Baja car. That thing is built from ground up year after year. We compete year after year uh, with that Baja car and it's extremely fast and it's extremely adorable as well because it jumps hill, go through mud, everything. So our students are truly excited about that. They build that car every year and we compete every year with that. And our last um, part of engineering department is our education, uh, education, engineering technology. With engineering technology, those are for those students that say, hey, I like engineering, but I don't like a whole lot of math. So we said, oh, that's perfect because engineering technology their occupation is used. They take what's on paper, they take theory and they make it practical. So you see the automotive commercials where we see the big robots and the arms, those are usually engineering technologists who have programmed them. And so let's talk about the money here. <laughs> so Herf College of Engineering, we, we offer scholarship to couple with the university scholarship. So in conjoint with the university offering, we have what we have, a merit scholarship. The first one is the $3,000 annual for a maximum of four years. It requires a 30 ACT composite or equivalent 1360 SAT with the GPA of 3.5. So we also have the higher one, $5,000 one, that requires a 32 ACT composite and a 32 ACT math. And also, or you can do it a 1420 SAT or a 730 on the math with a 3.5 GPA. These scholarships are in conjoint with the university scholarship. So we are able to couple with those. So whatever you receive from the main university, we're able to add that onto it as well. So we'll look forward to you know question you may have with engineer please uh, in the chat.
Yeah, great. Um, so I'm here to talk about the Honors College at the University of Memphis. Um, I, I invite you guys strongly to come be a part of the largest Honors College in the state of Tennessee. Um, our, our goal is to cultivate a community of undergraduate scholars who are ready to take their academics to the next level. Um, on this slide, you know, I've, I've got some of our key points, including our admission down at the bottom. Um, students receiving merit scholarships from the University of Memphis, the deans, the provost, or the presidential, get automatic admission to the Honors College. Additionally, we have an option for you to join the Honors College during your second semester or your third semester. So maybe your ACT or your high school GPA isn't really where you know, we need it to be for you to be a part of our program, but then the next semester we'll, we'll look at your college GPA and you've got you know, 12 credits of college down and you can get that 3.25, uh, then we'll definitely take you on into our program. Some of our most important benefits, I think number one that students would tell you is priority registration. If you're an honor student, you get to register before everyone on campus, that includes the seniors who are about to graduate. You get access to these small class sizes that are taught by our leading faculty on campus. In traditional classes at the University of Memphis in a normal year, right, you might have 150 kids in your psychology seminar. Uh, that doesn't offer as much room to develop relationships with faculty members as our honors classes, which are limited to about 25 students. So you get a little bit more in-depth instruction, you get to tackle the material a little bit more, and you get to build these relationships with these faculty members. And that's what we mean when we say this community of scholarship. We, in, we have our students engage, not just in their regular coursework and not just in you know, their involvement on campus, because all of that stuff is really important once you graduate, but to actually be involved in research or in co-curricular academic experiences, that could really change, change like the job market for you when you graduate from the University of Memphis. Um, additionally, I wanna you know, note that if you are receiving a merit scholarship from the University of Memphis, you can take honors classes to do your service hours. Um, if you have to do 150 service hours before um, you graduate or each semester, uh, you can take a three credit honors class and do that as well. So part of these requirements that we have is you have to take up to 25 hours of honors credit. That includes a one hour honors forum that I wanna talk about real quick. Um, Cause when we were talking about engineering, right? All these great possibilities. Um, as a freshman in our honors forum, you can be with one of our leading faculty members who is just they're one hour a week to talk about drones or to talk about tissue engineering. I teach a class about horror movies. I just sit there for an hour and talk about horror movies. It's that intellectual candy that we're trying to show um, all the undergrads and you high school seniors too, is very important that the idea of scholarship and research and academics could be anything. It could be anything that you think of. You can get um, financed by the Honors College to engage in research. That can count as one of your honors experiences. Um, so what we mean by honors experiences is like I mentioned, um, you're more than just your transcript. So the Honors College really pushes all of our honors students to get involved outside of the classroom. Uh, we have students present at national conferences, national and regional conferences. Um, this year, the national, national Conference for Undergraduate Research is being held virtually and we always send students who win our Works in Progress Symposium, which we're holding online this fall. And we have students working on research projects that get feedback from their peers and their faculty members. Additionally, an honors experience, and you can get these for credit and they count towards your requirements to graduate with honors distinction. You can study abroad uh, through the study abroad office, or you can study in broad. The honors college is home to the national student exchange office. So maybe you don't wanna go to Spain, maybe that like long flight over the Atlantic is a bit too much. Um, but at the University of Memphis, you can go study in like Montana for a semester if you find something there that's really interesting. Uh, you pay University of Memphis tuition to go to these places um, and you come back and the Honors College will respect those credits and those experiences that go on your transcript. Another point, we also have very, very active students. We have active involvement. Um, we have more than 20 students um, that participate in our events and in our Honors Student Organization. We have annual community service projects that, you know, I did say you can fulfill your service hours, um, through honors classes, but that doesn't mean we want you to not be engaged in the community. We have so many opportunities within the honors college. For you to, I say buff up that resume, but I also, you know, want to press that that's, that's part of developing in college is, is getting those community experiences and, and leaving classroom and still being engaged in your scholarship.
Awesome. And then earlier, I kind of talked about when you're looking at a location for the college about whether you should choose a small town or a big city. Um, I kind of failed to mention that at the University of Memphis, we have both options. So you can study at our main campus um, in Memphis, five minutes from downtown with all of the great opportunities. But if you see in a minute that we have over 20,000 students and that seems really, really large to you, you have the opportunity to study at our U of M Lambeth campus. And so it's a liberal arts field at a public school prize. The campus has the campus has around a thousand students. Um, there is around 20 majors um, and they also still have housing and dining. Um, and so every time that I've gone to the Lambeth campus, I've loved it. I feel like people know each other by their first name basis and it's very much so a small campus feel um, and you can still get a University of Memphis degree. So like I said earlier, we have over 20,000 students with qual which qualifies us as a large institution. One thing that I always like to point out is our 34% first generation rate. Um, and so we see this increasing um, every single year. And that's awesome. I think it's something that we should celebrate. We see a lot of students who will be the first time college graduates in their family. Um, and so our university has really supported that. And this last year, we have created a first generation office. Um, so students are able to get peer mentoring. They're able to get tutoring. Parents and family are able to get support. Um, when you come onto a college campus, we say a lot of words and a lot of acronyms and you're like, what is this? And what do they mean? Um, especially when you get to deal with financial aid and all of that. Um, and so we have a lot of options on campus, whether that's through the first generation office or any of our departments, where we're able to kind of walk you through that. Um, and I think that's also why we see that we have an 81% retention rate. So that just means that freshmen are coming back their sophomore year, then their junior year and their senior year. That's something we're really excited about. That means that we're finding you're finding your fit. So maybe you join some campus organization, organizations, you like your major um, and all of the above. And so that is something that we see um, and that we really like is our retention rate and our first generation student rate. Well, I hope you're loving everything you hear. And so the next obvious question is, how do I apply? How do I get admitted? So I'm gonna quickly go over our process with you so you feel more informed about what to expect. So our admission process is a comprehensive review. So we want to look at a variety of material, a variety of factors to determine if you're admissible. So the main item that we look at is your high school transcript. So when you apply for admission, you can self-report your grades or tell us what's on your transcript, or you can send us your transcript, either way. But we're gonna rely heavily on that. Now, if you were able to take an SAT or ACT score, Wonderful, send it our way. That'll help us give a quick and thorough review of your application. We're also gonna be watching to see, did you take any AP classes or dual credit classes or courses like that that were a little more challenging? Now you'll see highlighted in blue that I wrote test flexible for fall 2021. I do wanna reassure those of you who were not able to take the ACT or SAT, that it's okay. We can still review your application for admission without that test score. So there is a questionnaire that we may ask you to complete uh, depending on what your GPA is, but it's a simple, easy process. Our application is gonna take 10 to 15 minutes to complete because there's no essay. And you do see that there's a $25 application fee unless you qualify for free or reduced launch. And then last year, our average, now it's important that you notice this is our average. The average ACT was a 23 and the average GPA was a 3.5. That does not mean that that's what you need to attain to be admitted. Your GPA could be higher or lower, your ACT higher or lower, or no ACT at all. And we're still gonna evaluate you for admission. So please don't just get discouraged. If you have specific questions about your profile, your grades, reach out to our admissions office and share those concerns with us. And we can provide you with a little more guidance too. Next, I wanna tell you about the cost. We are a very affordable option for a wonderful degree. So for my non-Tennessee residents, which is all of you from Illinois, and I'm from Illinois too, tuition and fees for an entire year is right around $13,000. And that means paying for your instructors to teach you for a whole year worth of classes. That's what we're talking about when we say tuition fees and all those athletic fees and fees for a variety of things. It's all included in that amount that I'm sharing with you. And then if you decided to choose our most expensive meal plan and most expensive uh, room, 
it would be right around 10,000 a year, just under. So our total sticker price, our total direct cost for one whole year is around 23,000 for our out-of-state students. I'm not saying that that's what any of you will pay, but that is where we start. And then our goal is to try to help you find grants and scholarships and financial aid and whatever assistance we can to make this doable for you and your family financially. Now at the bottom of the screen, you see a couple terms there and I'll briefly just tell you what they mean. Guaranteed tuition plan, that means we lock your cost in as soon as you start with us for four years and it won't go up. So it's gonna save you and your family money. Automatic scholarships. We have some scholarships that when you apply for admission, you're automatically applying for them. No extra paperwork, no extra interviews, and you really like those, it saves you time. Uh, Non-resident fee waivers. We do have some waivers if you participate maybe in um, a musical program, a performance group, maybe in the Honors College. There's a certain number that we can grant to our non-resident students, and this may help you save some money too. And then departmental scholarships. There's actually over 700 different scholarships that we have available to students. And once you're admitted, we will give you access to this portal, which is essentially um, a place for you to search for scholarships based on your specific criteria, and it'll help you sort through them. And they're specifically for the University of Memphis. And then what you see now is just a peek at some of those automatic scholarships that, you, that we award. So if you applied or you're going to apply and you have over a 3.25 GPA and over that 1160 SAT, well, that's great because now we can tell you, you automatically get that $3,000 scholarship. And as your grades and test scores go up, so do the amounts. And our scholarship deadline has been extended. You see De December 1st there, but we actually just extended it to March 1st because we realized several students are just now starting to take that ACT and SAT test. So if you like what you hear and you like what you see, your next step is to come and see us because we really do want you to experience our campus and the city. We want you to see our students we really just want you to fall in love with what we can offer you and determine, is it the right fit? Can the University of Memphis help you accomplish your goals professionally and personally and develop? So what you could do is if you haven't already taken our virtual tour, I encourage you to do that. The virtual tour is on our website. You can click and move around our campus so you have a good feel and a good view of what you would find. We have resumed on-campus tours as well. Now these are small group tours. Uh, we're following COVID policies and we do encourage you, you must make a reservation ahead of time. And we have certain guidelines that you'll want to review before scheduling that tour. If you know you're gonna come, you can even reach out to me. I'm your admissions counselor. And I like to provide you a list. It's my top 20. It has restaurants I recommend, lodging, tourist attractions for you to take in. Because if you're going to make that trip, you know, from Illinois or Chicago, I want you to explore. I want you to take in as much as you can on this visit. And if you want to meet with professors or the Honors College or engineering, let me know. And I'll kind of be your travel agent. I'll help you set that up because I really want you and your family to make the most of your visit with us. So next, connect with us. Connect with us in whatever manner you like. Uh, you can reach out to me, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, uh, look at our website periodically, because essentially we have announcements, we have updates, maybe um, some new scholarships, and we want you to be aware of whatever's new and fabulous. Um, if we're going to have a special event, I want you to be invited. So connect with us in whatever manner you like. When you apply for admission too, that also gets you on my list, so I know that I can reach out to you and um, stay in touch with you. So at this time, we want to transition to some question and answers that you may have, um, some questions you may want to ask us. Please feel free to use the Q&A box. And if there's a certain question 
that you have that we did not address, this is the perfect time to ask it. And then again, if you think of a question tomorrow or next week, never hesitate to reach out to us in those manners that I encourage you to connect with us and ask your questions. Because I think each of us that are here tonight, we're very passionate about our job and we love to assist students. And we know this is a new process for you. And there's going to be terms that you're not familiar with. Or maybe I send you an email and you're like, oh, what is she asking me? Reach out to us and connect with us. And we are happy to walk you through each term and each step so that you feel informed and connected uh, with the process. Um, hey, no one specifically asked this, but I do want to affirm that when Kenneth says we have the best water in Memphis, it's not a lie. It's our water is real good everywhere in the city. I just wanted to put that out there. It's it's some good stuff, guys. Cool. Well, I I think this might be a good time for those of you on the panel too. Um, what advice would you give these juniors and seniors from Illinois? Uh, that are watching tonight, what advice would you give them? It could be about anything. Um, I kind of think back about when I was 18 and 17, what advice do I wish I would have given myself when I was in their shoes? And um, so I'll let, if anybody wants to kind of chime in and share what you would have told your 17 or 18 year old self <laughs> when you were going through this process, that would be great. Yeah, I think I definitely uh, would have said it'd be a little bit more organized. <laughs> and so that could be with a college checklist. And so thinking about the location, um, the affordability, the majors that they have, you definitely want to choose somewhere that has your majors so that when you invest your time and money into that college in four years, you're going to graduate and be able to go out into the career field. Um, and so thinking about all those little things, um, getting a checklist, creating a college email, those type of things, um, but also not being afraid to reach out. So Jamie, like Jamie said, she is your resource and she is a great resource. She would love to help you. You can email her, call her, text her, um, and she will be able to walk you throughout the admissions process. So checklist and then be sure to reach out whenever you have any questions. I would say um, if don't be, don't think that you need to know your major when you pick a school. Um, I, you'll hear it a lot and I'll tell you my story, right? I changed my major about four times, right? But I was really glad that I was at a school that gave me the access to kind of adventure out of my comfort zone. And um, it was, you know, especially at the University of Memphis, man, it's like a nice culture where you can say to any faculty member, hey, I might be interested in doing this major. I, I'm not really too sure. You'll get a friendly answer. You'll get some friendly advice. Certainly as you're looking for schools, um, don't go and just visit the college or the department that you think you wanna go study in. See the whole campus. Meet every type of faculty member and every type of student, every type of staff person, uh, cause you'll be there for four years. You, 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 lots gonna happen. Um, and it's gotta be a place that, you know, you feel comfortable and enough to, you know, change your mind if you, if you need to. Um, I would say, um, for me, if I can talk to my younger self, <laughs> I would say um, when deciding my major in my institution, um, base it on the place where I would have opportunities upon graduating and also um, that it allowed me to intern within close to the university because there's a lot of opportunities that where I can still or maintain being a full-time student and interning at the same time versus waiting to the summer and trying to do a full internship and take online class. Why you can do it simultaneously throughout the semester if you're in a city that provide opportunity for your major. So base your college decision based on what the city has to offer within your career field as well. I think I would tell my, you know, 17 year old self that when I would go and do the campus tour, to spend more time than just that one hour tour there. I, I remember like one of the campuses, I just drove around, I'm like, nope, not for me. And I left. <laughs> and when I think about Memphis, this is why I send my students this top 20 list. 
I want you to spend time on campus, but I want you to walk to this restaurant. I want you to dine there. I want you to look at where you would go watch live music performances. Maybe if you love football, well, what's our schedule look like? You know, where are the games played? And so I would tell my 17 year old self to be, look at more, you know, try to explore more when you're on that college campus because there's so much that we can't put in that one hour tour that will add to the whole experience that you're gonna have when you're uh, in college. So that's what I would tell myself. <laughs> and I'll tell, tell students that. So we did have a question. Um, the students completed the FAFSA and submitted it to the university. When will they receive confirmation that it has been received? So we haven't started processing those financial aid award letters yet. Um, typically, we're looking more toward November before those start to be processed. A lot of times we'll tell students around Thanksgiving to Christmas is when those begin to go out. And you will receive notification. You'll receive an email notification and it'll go to your Memphis email account, My Memphis. And then when you log into your My Memphis portal, you'll be able to see it there. Um, but I encourage you to watch your email because sometimes even though you submitted the FAFSA, we need some extra documentation. And we tend to communicate that uh, to you through your Memphis email. Like maybe we need some supporting documents for you, the student, or from your parents. So be watching that. And if extra documentation is needed, we'll let you know. And then once you do get your financial aid award letter, do feel free to reach out to us if you have questions. But we do try to clearly list what you're receiving and what your balance is. And if you, you know, think there's a discrepancy, just reach out to us. We're going to be here to try to clarify that for you. And if you've applied to more than one university, each one will look different. Uh, they don't look the same. And so that, that's part of what makes it a little bit confusing at times. So. Any other questions this evening? Any final comments? from my very talented panel that's with us tonight. Well, Jamie, I don't have a question uh, per se, but I know I often I get students with, do I have to do a SAFTA application to get accepted into engineer? And at the University of Memphis, we do not have to do a separate application to get it accepted into engineer. You just declare engineer as your major and you are part of the department. Perfect. Yes, excellent. I just want to say go Tigers. Oh. <laughs> go Tigers. Yes, it is homecoming week to the students who, um, who may not know that. And we're doing a lot of great virtual homecoming activities. Um, the university as a whole provides so many opportunities for you to interact with your professors, your peers, your fellow students and the city really supports the university and campus um, in a variety of ways. And so, uh, yes, go, go Tigers. So. <laughs> um. I think that's all we have um, for this evening, but like always, feel free to contact us at any point, ask us any question. Um, and it is really, if you haven't been to campus, it's very refreshing to see so many individuals working hard for students, um, doing everything they possibly can to help the students really and personally and give them all these fabulous opportunities. And this group right here goes above and beyond to help students too. So, so we look forward to working with you. Hope you join us at the University of Memphis. Jamie. Ina, I think we'll... Yeah. Jamie, can you um, stop sharing yours so I can share my slide and my last slide? Sure. Thank you. Yes, happy to do so. You're welcome. Okay. So um, yeah, great, great job, everybody. And I just want to, <clears throat> excuse me, to quickly mention for the participants that first of all, we thank you so much for joining us. Um, and we do have a quick survey that as soon as you close this window will pop up. It's only four questions. So please, if you have a second, fill it out. We'd really like your um, feedback. 
And then also um, you can sign up for additional sessions if you like this experience and you wanna um, see more on the IACAC website at IACAC.org, you'll find other sessions listed. In addition, if you wanted to go back and hear something again or see what all um, is out there, these sessions are all recorded and the recordings are posted on that same website, IACAC.org. So one last call for thoughts or anything and if not, we'll wrap it up. All right, thank you so much. Everybody have a great evening. And again, thank you for joining us.